So babes, summertime is fast approaching and we all know what that means. New styles, fast moving trends, and a whole batch of Pinterest inspo for you to save. But let's take a step back. Who is it really that's telling us how we should dress? The TikTokers, magazine editors, influencer gals? And while they deem outfits like this as fashionable, I just think loud, bold, and well, uncomfortable. So instead, here are some summer 22 fashion trend alternatives that are realistic for the everyday girl, the college student, the busy mom, the hardworking office employee, or basically anyone that wants to rock some cute outfits that are still practical for the everyday person. But before we get started, just a disclaimer guys, fashion is so subjective and what I may deem as too out there may be your favorite thing to wear and that's totally okay. I just thought it would be really fun to deconstruct what I think is typical influencer fashion and emphasize which trends I think you can wear instead that are more within your comfort zone. I also I want to thank Anna Luisa for sponsoring today's video. They are the everyday jewelry staple for the everyday girl, so I'm gonna get more into that later. So without further ado, here are 2022 summer trends for the everyday girl. Okay, first big trend, mesh mania. I've been seeing a ton of outfits, specifically on the runways, that are really head to toe mesh. Tops, bottom skirts, and while I definitely appreciate the creativity on a lot of these, having a full head to toe mesh outfit not super practical, but this is definitely something that is too see-through for me and I personally wouldn't feel comfortable wearing out and about. So for the everyday girl, I personally really like using mesh as a layering pieces. For example, if you have any tank top with like super thin straps, you can actually put a long sleeve mesh shirt underneath. I've been seeing lately mesh socks have been really cute. So if you're somebody who likes to wear sneakers or loafers and you wanna add a cute little accent, or if you wanna do the reverse, instead of a layering mesh underneath, you can wear it over top. So if you have like a solid outfit, a top and a bottom, and you wanna wear something over your shoulders. There's actually really cute mesh cardigans that I've been seeing as well. Some of them just tie here at the front. Some of them have like the full buttons going down, but that's a much easier way to integrate this trend and make it a bit more wearable for an everyday kind of look. Next, corset tops. Love hate relationship with these because as much as I see them on other people and I think they are stunning, I personally can't turn away from the fact that it just looks like lingerie to me. And walking down the street, I don't know how comfortable I would feel. There were alternatives to people kind of wearing longer sleeves men's button downs underneath, which is also a very cute cute look, but there's just something about the boning of corsets, especially when they emphasize like the breast area. I feel like it's definitely more out there. Maybe for like a night out, I could pull off something like that. But if I was just like going to school or going into the office, I wouldn't feel like it would be so appropriate. A more wearable trend that I kind of feel gives off a very similar look is actually integrating a waistcoat into your outfit or these like little button up vests, if you know what I'm talking about. Lately, I've been seeing they're coming back hard and they're really cute because I feel like especially when you button it up, it does give you that corset style, but it's a a lot more casual and so much easier to wear. You could wear it on your own if you just want to sport it as a top. I personally also really like layering it on top of something, even as simple as a t-shirt. It looks awesome and I've seen them in so many different materials too and it still kind of gives off that like model off duty look, especially if you pair it with a very simple look like a basic t-shirt and jeans. I love it. So back in like 2008, if I could find my photos from high school, me and the girls, whenever we'd head out, we'd put on our tight ass, bomb ass bodycon dresses. We felt so hot, especially going to the club. When I entered college, I thought that those dresses were not going to be coming back, but now I'm seeing them all over, especially on the runways. These tight-fitting, short-ass bodycon dresses are making a comeback. Personally, I just think that they're uncomfortable. It's the combination of like the tightness and the shortness of the dress. Bending down in it, I mean, it's, it's just too much. So what would I recommend instead for the everyday girl? Something that gives off that same like body tight, skin tight feeling, but it's a lot more stylish and a lot more wearable. And that is things like the jumpsuits and the unitards. And if you guys want to know what I'm talking about, about, just picture the Aritzia Divinity suits. These are so cute and you can really wear them on so many different occasions Whether you're gonna go for like a yoga class or transitioning into the office You can wear like the wide flare long pants one with a blazer on top that can look super good Or even if you're running errands I would just pair the shorts unitard with like a flannel maybe a little cap super cute The next sort of influencer trend that I've been seeing a lot of lately is a comeback of like really big chunky Jewelry not just chunky but colorful and this was really one of those trends that I have had a hard time trying to find an alternative for because I really think that this trend is gonna come out just as fast as it came in. Remember when those like really big acrylic rings were all the rage last summer? Nobody's even really wearing them right now. I really feel that for the everyday person, the best thing that you can do for your wardrobe is get yourself some good staple basic everyday jewelry pieces. Ana Luisa, I'm wearing a bunch of their jewelry today and these have really become my perfect everyday staples because Ana Luisa crafts high quality jewelry at very affordable prices. Some of my favorites I'm wearing today is these bold hoops. They're very minimal 
realistic, but they're just chunky enough that you can still see them very well. And as soon as my daughter Aaliyah was born, I knew that I really wanted to get her letter on me as well. Ana Luisa is the only site that had exactly what I wanted because this initial is so dainty and so beautiful. And what I love so much is that it's built right into the necklace, so it's not going to be moving around. And then this one, not really sure what it's called, but I'm going to have all of them linked down below. I'm going to show you guys one more piece that I got. I actually haven't worn it, but it's brand new and I'm obsessed. This is their mama necklace. Egan chose this out for me for Mother's Day and I think it's honestly the sweetest gift. Even though Mother's Day passed, I feel like it's so special to maybe even gift for your mom or even for yourself because if you're a mama, you definitely deserve it. I always feel like my outfits are not complete if I'm not wearing my jewelry. Their designs are so unique and they'll make you feel empowered, elegant, and always at your finest. And you guys know on this channel how much we care about our earth. Ana Luisa products are all sustainably made. From packaging to products, Ana Luisa is carbon neutral. They really care about the planet. Each piece of jewelry came with these little pouches that have magnetic clasps. These are perfect to keep, especially for when I'm traveling and want to take my jewelry with me. I'm also a lazy person. I sleep in my jewelry, I shower in my jewelry, and I love the fact that it hasn't been damaged. All of their pieces range from just $39 to higher end pieces, so there's really something for everybody. Plus, you can get 10% off if you use my discount code, which is Haley's Corner 10. So whether you want to go ahead and treat yourself or you want to gift a loved one, I'm going to leave a link down below for you guys to check out Ana Luisa for yourself. You can check out these pieces or you can browse all the other beautiful ones on their website. They offer super quick delivery literally all over the world. And classic pieces like this, they'll never go out of style. I really wanted to touch on this next trend and that is crochet sets. I've been seeing a bunch of these crochet sets on Instagram and on Pinterest, on these influencer gals. And I will say, while these dresses look super cool, I feel like they're just really giving me vacation vibes. But how do we make it a bit more wearable on an everyday? If you integrate one of these crochet pieces in a single piece or in an accessory. So some things I've been loving off of Depop, I bought these two checker bags, one in brown and one in green. They are like the best tote bags. They're so easy to carry around. I know if I was still in college, this is what I'd be carrying my school books in. And then most recently I picked up on Poshmark this bucket hat, which which I just thought is so cool. It still kind of gives off that summery spring vibe without feeling too vacation-y. Or if you're just like super set on trying this out, maybe instead of a set, you can pair things separately. So the crochet skirt with like a different top or the crochet top with maybe some flared jeans or flared bottoms. I feel like that would be a little bit easier to wear. And then you can make a bunch of different outfits using those pieces rather than just the one set. Okay, you guys. So the next trend I've been seeing a ton of is a parachute pants. I don't know if this is something that already existed or Gen Z just came up with this term but basically they're like huge oversized pants that are just kind of blown up like a parachute so it makes sense why they're called parachute pants they're so big and i for sure feel like the reason we're seeing these again is because y2k has been popular for the last couple of years all right so these can definitely look sick in an Instagram photo. I will say it will look cool. It will get you the likes, but I just don't see how I myself would wear them or feel comfortable wearing them. So the alternative I will provide definitely still just as casual, but a little bit more wearable. And that's just wearing regular cargo pants. I've been seeing a lot of brands coming out with cargo pants that are actually high waisted and not necessarily low rise. They're a bit more fitted around the hips and then they go looser in the leg and the thigh. Paired with some sneakers, I feel like they still give off that very cool laid back vibe without being balloon pants pretty much. So something that's been super hot on Instagram has been the cutout tops. And I'm talking cutout tops, cutout bottoms. Pretty much looks like you took a pair of scissors to everything and you just went ham. Like I'm okay with a slit here and there, but when it comes to the point that the shirt looks like it's barely being held together by anything, it's a little bit much for me. Again, these are some of those pieces that would look so cool for Instagram photos. And I guess that's what I want to keep reiterating to you guys. When you're pinning photos, when you're saving photos on Instagram, you really have to take a step back and think to yourself, is this something that I like because it looks great? on her or is this something that I would put on myself and walk right out the door I brought that up before and it really changed the way that I pin and it really changed the way that I save my photos because I feel like I have a different mindset as I'm saving rather than saying this is great inspiration for something I'd never wear I like to save inspiration for something that will actually help me decide what to wear so I don't know how much of an alternative this is but if you're someone who just wants to show a little bit more skin and still kind of have that like stringy detail in your clothes I would just swap cutout tops for halter tops yes it gives off a very different look but I personally really like the fact that the halter tops kind of wrap around your neck you still have that stringy detail but then your shoulders can still be open and you can show a bit more skin so something I've collectively realized with a lot of the people I was following is that the photos that they were showing on Instagram were always portraying this more is more type of outfit the more colors you add in the more patterns the more clashing details the more stylish you are and the more confident you must be if you're wearing all of that but I think that just because something is loud it doesn't mean that it looks good it's kind of like what we saw at the Met Gala so many of the outfits were like so wild and so 
out there, but it didn't necessarily mean that it worked. And I think as much as I'm seeing a bunch of these outfits that are like so loud and have so much going on, sometimes for myself or for the everyday person, I would much rather take one really cool element about an outfit and make that be the staple piece in a whole look. So what do I mean? Instead of having a bunch of colors in an outfit, maybe just take one really bold color and make that the statement either in the top or in the accessories or in the shoes. And you can do the same thing with textures as well. Instead of wearing stripes and polka dots and fur and feathers, maybe just grab one element like the feathers, for example, and have that detail be in a purse or some fringe on a top or focus on one pattern. Make your striped top be the shining star in your look. And I will say me, and again, emphasizing, this is just me. I don't necessarily think that the louder and the bolder the piece is, the better the outfit. So your top two answers for things that you see a ton of influencers wearing on Instagram, but you personally wouldn't wear yourself were low rise jeans and micro skirts. So let's talk about the low rise jeans. I have a very love hate relationship with this because I personally feel like the majority of low rise pants don't look flattering. I felt like there was one pair of cargos that were low rise I was able to wear and actually like, but the more I wore them, the more uncomfortable I got because something I realized about low rise pants, as much as they look cute, they're not comfortable. Every time you sit down because the waistband is so low, you're probably flashing somebody your underwear. So the first alternative I'm gonna give is for people that wanna dabble into the low rise, but they don't necessarily wanna take the plunge. Something you can do is is actually get yourself a pair of mid-rise jeans and then compromise all the midriff that you would be showing by pairing it with a longer tank top. So let me show you what I mean. In this reel right here, I styled these cargos, which I would definitely say are a little bit closer to a mid-rise than a low-rise, but I actually paired it with a longer tank top so my belly button wasn't showing and the amount of midriff showing was like very minimal. But obviously the classic alternative for the everyday person, if you don't like low-rise, just stick with your high-rise baby. I mean, most of my jeans in my closet are still high-rise and I still love them and I still reach for those the most as much as people are saying that's it high rise is out nothing is considered out if it's something that you feel good in something that you personally see yourself looking good in and something that you're comfortable in there's nothing sexier about an outfit than an outfit you're comfortable in and then we've got the micro skirts Okay, like I said, so many girls on Instagram and on Pinterest, they look great in these, but then again, they look great for the photo. How practical is it if you're gonna wear it? I don't really know. I mean, if you have to second guess yourself every time you bend over or every time you sit in a chair or every time the wind picks up and breathes, then I don't know how practical you'd consider that piece of clothing. Micro skirts are a very, very, very hot fashion trend right now, but I do feel like they're definitely a trend for Instagram and for the Instagram content and for the photos and for the reels. But for the everyday girl, I mean, especially in high school, did anyone else's high school make you put your hands down and like your skirt had to reach the bottom of your fingers and that was like the required length do you know what i mean is maybe instead opt for a midi or a maxi skirt obviously it doesn't give the same look as a mini skirt but i actually think that they're just as hot and they're just as popular right now and they're so much more comfortable too but i'm really noticing with a lot of alternatives that i'm giving you guys most of them are just like a more modest way to wear certain clothes i am definitely not the most modest dressed person out there but i definitely have my limitations on how much skin i want to show and what i feel comfortable comfortable in, not because of anyone else, but really because of myself. And I feel like that's another really big thing that people need to consider when saving outfits. You gotta look at these inspiration photos and these outfits and ask yourself if that's something that you're comfortable wearing. Not even just in terms of the style, but in terms of the cuts. Do you wanna be showing that much skin? Would you feel comfortable going to the park in that? Would you feel comfortable having like a really big lunch and still wearing that? Would you be comfortable surrounded by a bunch of strangers wearing that? Like all of these things are things that you need to consider when you are looking to somebody for inspiration in terms of what to wear. And I'm really just emphasizing all of this because I feel like these days we always feel like we have to strive to be like other people without really checking with ourselves what our standards are and what our limitations are. I can straight up tell you guys, I wouldn't wear bra tops. I wouldn't wear micro mini skirts. I don't like showing my cleavage. I don't like shorts that are too short. And that's just me. Nobody created these rules for me. I created them for myself. And I would suggest just do the same thing. Learn your limitations and your standards on what you feel comfortable wearing. And then that way you'll be able to follow people that align with your standards so that you don't have to compromise how comfortable you are when you see something cute that you would never wear. All right, you guys, these videos videos mean nothing if we can't talk about it. So I really want to keep this conversation going down below. Let me know what your guys' thoughts were on this topic in general. Do you agree? Do you feel like sometimes you pin stuff and you save stuff that are kind of out of your comfort zone, but you still save them because they look good? Were any of these tips helpful at all? Let me know down below. Is there any specific trend that you feel like you would definitely wear or one that you agree with me, you would definitely not? I really want to keep this conversation going. I'm also going to leave a link down below for you guys to check out Ana Luisa, sustainable jewelry that is made to look so good. I mean, it's really the perfect combination of the two. You guys can use my code Haley's Corner 10 to get 10% off your order. But thank you guys again so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. And follow me on Instagram to see what I'm up to on a day-to-day. -day. Love you all, and I can't wait to see you in my next one.